right, good morning, everybody. Hi, I'm Ovi. Before I begin any presentation, just wanted to thank Janine and her team. Really tremendously professional job they've done, and uh, appreciate the opportunity to come here all the way from Israel to present to you guys some of the applications and innovations that our company, Viar Imaging, is doing with radar, and more broadly, some of the way that radar is impacting the world in ways other than speeding tickets and weather. So I'm going to jump right in. Anybody who has any questions, feel free to jump in. But anything uh, more substantive, we can meet up afterwards. So first off, a few words about myself. As you can hear, while our company is Israel-based, uh, if anybody can tell from my voice, I'm notably American, so it's good to be home. Uh, and it's good to be spending some time with you guys. Our company is based right outside of Tel Aviv. We're called Vayar Imaging. And what we do essentially is utilize radar in imaging and monitoring applications in what we believe to be an innovative way. And I want to share with you some of the progress that we've made with those applications, uh, provide you guys with some of the technical details of how we've been able to do that, what type of uh, chip design we've been able to accomplish, and as well, how we've been able to work both with uh, corporations and researchers on taking the applications within the world of radar and bringing those really into the hands of consumers all around the world. So let me jump in by starting with how we began our company. So if you look on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see an image from a mammogram, okay? And uh, this is an image that's taken classical mammogram image. It's two-dimensional, and you'll note the circle is a cancerous growth inside of a breast. Okay, so our company began in 2008, really 2007 we incorporated, but we began chip design already in 2008, and our initial application, our initial thrust was to create a chip that was able to both transmit and, you know, it was able to send commands to antennas to both transmit and receive radio waves in order to be able to do 3D imaging inside of the body. Okay, and that was how we began. We created a system on chip, uh, our first of many, based on a chip that's able to transmit and receive waves from essentially DC up to 20 gigahertz. Uh, and when we did this, we were able to start creating a medical device that literally is able to look inside of the human body and to be able to do real-time 3D imaging for cancerous growths inside of the breast. Okay, so this device is in Israel and testing in two of the major hospitals around the center of the country, around Tel Aviv. And as well, we have a contract to move into India starting in early 2019. Now, the goal here is obviously to provide access. Does anybody in the room know how much a uh, mammogram machine costs commercially? Does anybody have a guess? Any guesses? Try to keep you guys, what'd you say? Two to oh, because you see it on the screen, thank you. <laughs> That was my, my first good joke of the day is that it's on the screen. I was just trying to see if anybody noticed. So two to four hundred thousand dollars commercially, and we anticipate that we'll be able to provide uh, a real-time imaging system that will be roughly one percent of the price of that, maybe two percent of the price, but roughly one percent of the price of that. Now, what's more interesting and more impactful is that it's not just about price. What we're doing here is creating uh, a system whereby it's number one safer rather than using uh, the very heavily powered x-rays that are used in a mammography, we're using very low power, uh, very low frequency radio waves, okay? Now the system, if you can imagine, looks basically like, um, basically like a UFO, um, but it's, it's essentially a plastic uh, heavy bra that weighs about three kilograms that can sit around the breast. We have inside of it, uh, our latest prototype has in it 190 antennas and 10 concatenized chips. Uh, in addition to that, we have some relatively heavy processing inside of the device, um, but within now a matter of less than 60 seconds, we can get a real-time 3D image of what's happening inside of the breast. So if you look on the right, you can see this is a 3D recreation, and the way we're able to do that is that we're able to measure the waves that bounce back, and there's going to be a difference between the fatty breast tissue or uh, you know, whatever else you would, you would find inside of a breast versus uh, the waves that bounce back that are coming from any type of growth that's inside of there. So what we do is we measure or calculate all of those waves together. We build an algorithm whereby we can recreate a 3D image of the growth that's inside of the breast. Okay, now obviously we have quite a bit of time to go before we get to FDA approvals and CE approvals, but we anticipate moving commercially into India within the next year. Uh, and our goal here really was to create a chip that enabled us to do this three-dimensional imaging inside of the body. 
a funny thing happened on the way to building this chip and creating this medical device is that we realized that the chip has lots and lots of other capabilities. Once we have a piece of hardware that can transmit and receive waves from DC up to 20 gigahertz, we started to build around that chip uh, different type of systems. And uh, the first we built, actually the chip also, notably I should mention, has 20 proper TXRX. So we started to build uh, very small systems on chip and started to create applications surrounding those systems on chip uh, for imaging, for monitoring. And here's an example of one of those. This actually what you see on your screen is called VBOB. Uh, v for Viar Bob because it's square shaped, and um, and what we have here is one chip and or two chips and 40 antenna that are working together. It's about 22 by 22 centimeters. I have one by our booth that you guys can check out later today. Um, and what we do is we utilize this chipset in order to create. 3D imaging sensors. Now, uh, when Janine began, she said that when you think about radar, you think about two things. You think about traffic tickets and you think about snowstorms, okay? Now, our goal at Viar is to be able to create systems whereby you think about radar from a standpoint of imaging and monitoring and we'll get to as well testing, okay? Uh, some of the applications that we've developed have already been commercialized. Some of those are on the way to being commercialized. We've also worked with some notable corporations, I'll mention a few of them, uh, on specific applications that tie to these pillars of imaging, monitoring, and testing. And what we'll do is, I'd like to, over the next 10 minutes or so, walk you through some of those applications and show you a couple of the products uh, that we've turned into real world examples of using radar, not just to save lives, but to improve the world. Um, this is an example of one company, Viar, but the same, type of, uh, the same type of systems are being utilized at some other major corporations, and I'll, I'll mention those as well. After I have a chance to show you some of those applications, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a few minutes to show you uh, what I believe to be one of the most important trends in both research and as well development from a radar perspective, and that is development kits. Uh, evaluation kits that have been made commercially available uh, to folks like yourselves, whereby you have an open API and you're able to create your own applications, develop your own products on chipsets like ours. And I'll, I'll mention a couple of examples of these in different contexts, both high frequency and low frequency. Okay? Uh, before I jump in, any questions? Okay, let's go. All right, so I mentioned a couple of these applications. Let me give you some examples uh, of some of the work that we've done in the world of radar that is commercially available right now. Uh, these are not the applications that I'll do a deep dive in, but they give you a sense of some of what we're doing. If you look up at the tree, Okay, so this is a, a project we did for an Israeli drip irrigation company. What we did was we put sensors into the ground in order to be able to measure the relative water density in a specific point in the ground. Now what happens is if you're an irrigation company, most important thing for you to know is how much water you have in the ground and when do I have to irrigate again? When do I have to turn on the water effectively? Uh, and right now, the irrigation companies, or let's say farmers broadly, are looking either at uh, images that are based on color that they're getting from drones, they're looking at all different types of data that has nothing to do with what's happening, number one, at the root level, and number two, what's happening in terms of the moisture level in the ground at a scientific level. So what we did is we developed a system. Uh, it's essentially two long, um, two long PCBs that go into the ground about two meters deep. Okay, they transmit and receive waves between the two of them. They're set about one meter apart. And what we do is we're able to, based on that propagation, we're able to uh, essentially determine how much moisture there is in the ground at a given time. And what this is able to do is it gives the irrigation companies or the farmers a better sense of when and when not to be watering the ground. We've taken this to the next level and started to work with producers of things like oranges, almonds, all different type of foods to try to understand Along the development, I'll give you one example, there are eight stages of potato growth. And at each stage of the growth of a potato, you have to irrigate the ground, you have to provide water inside of the roots at different levels. So what we've started to do is started to understand what are the different levels of potato growth and what's the optimum amount of water to be given to a specific plant at a specific time based on its cycle of growth. So that's one example. Another one I mentioned already, breast cancer. But if you look on the bottom right, uh, the, the picture is actually a misnomer. We don't have a mode for brick. Um, but what we have is a product called Wallabot DIY. And this uses uh, essentially a micro radar. I can show you an example of it right up here. Okay. Here's an example. 
Okay, inside here is what we would call a micro radar, but it's basically just a PCB with 18 antennas printed on, or 20 antennas depending on the version you have, printed on a board. Okay, it's got uh, a single chip of ours and it connects to a mobile device, to a cell phone. Uh, we have a simple to use app and if you're doing a DIY project or a construction project, you take it up to your wall, you scan your wall and you're able to see on your cell phone exactly what's behind it. And we have pretty simple algorithms that are able to tell you if it's a pipe, a wire, a stud, uh, if it's a rodent, or if, God forbid, it's something else. But the idea here is to use radar in order to do imaging behind the wall, okay? Because we're using these low, uh, low frequency signals, we're able to go inside of the wall and we're able to create a commercially viable product. We've sold, um, and note, we are not a sales and marketing company, we're a research and development company, but we've sold over 150,000 of these in the last two years. So this is an example of radar being used practically commercially to improve people's lives. Okay, and then the, third, the, the fourth example you see on the screen right here is uh, a milk can. So here we also do some sensing. We take milk, we work with uh, a major integrator of milk farms in Europe. Uh, we take milk and we pass it through a very, very small plastic tube. And what we do is we send, we have an antenna right next to that tube. We send a single signal. Signal hits the milk and bounces back. And what we do is then we analyze the wave that bounces back, and we're able to, through different features of the wave, determine to FDA approval levels, or in Europe what's called CE approval levels, the protein content, the milk fat, and the lactose. And it's able to save millions and millions of dollars for milk farmers all around Europe. So this is something that we've already prototyped, and we've done in a few farms, uh, and we anticipate it should hopefully enable us to take milk farming up to a, to a totally different level, again, using very simple principles surrounding uh, our radio waves. Okay, so let's jump into a couple of the projects that we're working on that I wanted to share with you guys that I don't think anybody here knows about yet. The first one is a new model for elderly care. Okay, so what we've done is, similar to the board that I showed you first, what I called the V-Bob, uh, we have something that is able to determine not just where a person is standing. Let me give you actually a practical example, okay? If I took a small sensor and I put it on the side of the room, okay? So I can now create an arena, uh, essentially with three coordinates, X, the Y, and the Z, and I'm able to do what's called voxelization, or I'm able to per basically provide you with a point cloud of where I have the strongest reflectors in the room. So now in a room like this, the strongest reflectors most certainly are going to be the people sitting on the chairs. And so what we do is we create a system that's meant for a smart home context, for an elderly care context. It could be in a, let's say, in a, in a nursing home, and it could be in the, the bathroom of a, your elderly grandmother, okay? We create a very simple application on a very complex uh, PCB that has uh, antennas printed on it. And what we're able to do is we create this 3D map of the room. Now, what happens is the 3D map of the room is dynamic and it's real time. So now if you have somebody who walks around the room, I'm able to track the way that person is walking and I'm able to take uh, their reflection in real time. Now what else is really neat is that we have uh, good enough accuracy with our point cloud that we can also determine not just the positioning of the person or the people in the room, but we can also determine their posture. So that starts to become interesting when you have an elderly person who spends most of the day sitting on a couch and you want to determine their habits, their features. But where it really becomes interesting is we start to think about things like fall detection, okay? So now fall detection is done in the following manner. Somebody wears uh, a cord and string around their neck and if they fall you have an accelerometer there that then has a voice over IP or a SIM card and it calls uh, a hospital or calls your son and tells them that you've fallen down. However, the challenge is when people go into the bathroom or people go into the shower, they don't wear those cords around their neck, okay? The wearables have proved not to work and 80% of falls actually occur in the bathroom. Why? Because it's the slipperiest place in the house. So the place where you've got the biggest risk is also the place in which you've got the least protection, okay? By the way, the next level of the house where most of those falls happen actually is the bedroom coming out of bed. So those are the two hot areas for fall detection are in the shower and as well by the bedroom right next to the bed, okay? And as you could imagine, the two places that elderly people do not wear the first, uh, the first response, uh, the first responders are when they're sleeping in their bed and when they're in the shower, okay? So we created a product and this is something that's going to be commercially available within the next month called Wallabot Home, okay? It basically looks like a tablet but 
What's magical is that we use radar. We don't use any optics, okay? So now somebody has peace of mind in their bathroom, right? You don't have any cameras that are looking at you. You don't have any personal data that's being collected, but you're able to detect the fall based on the radar reflection of the individual in the bathroom. Now, it's not just based on the reflection, it's also based on the pattern. So if you have somebody who's standing and the reflection goes from being upright, let's say we're thinking in terms of, uh, you know, of how high up my reflection is and it goes from 1.6 meters to 0.4 meters very quickly. So this is something that's being tracked um, and it's being analyzed on the device itself. And when the fall occurs, the elderly person gets a very soft, very gentle ding, 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 beep, beep, beep alarm. And then it places through the device a call to their loved ones, to whoever's number they've put into the device. So this is something that we're going to be releasing in uh, early November onto the market for the holiday season. Uh, for the first time, I don't want to get too commercial here. But the idea here is to be able to provide a device that uses radar to detect falls in real time. Um, and so this is another example of using radar in order to improve the world with commercially viable products, okay? Another example, one that I'm sure everybody could have guessed, is automotive. But what we're doing slightly different is we're not thinking in terms of using radar outside of the car for collision avoidance. Instead, we're thinking about tracking people inside of the car. So doing things like seatbelt reminders, let's say, God forbid, somebody forgets a baby inside of a car, okay? So if somebody forgets a baby inside of a car right now, there's no way in which the mother can get an alert on her cell phone that the baby's been forgotten in the car. Now you can put a camera there, but the camera can't measure somebody's breathing rate. Now what we're able to do is we put a very simple, uh, a very simple system inside of the hood of the car, okay? And we've already announced partnerships with two tier one manufacturers, Vallejo and Foresia, to be able to put these very simple system on chips in the top of the car, basically in the hood of the car, not the hood, basically in the, in the roof of the car. And then those systems are able to not just tell you where people are sitting in real time, but they're also able to measure somebody's breathing rate. So now you have a situation where you can send a first alert to the parent, uh, but then based on how the breathing rate of the child changes, you can then send another alert to a hospital or to an ambulance. Okay, we also have things like airbag optimization and eventually we'll get to a point of where we can also do things in the car exterior. We can already do the 360 degree projection, but what we're thinking about building is a system whereby we can go between, uh, somewhere between a LIDAR and a simple radar to be able to look at longer distances, but at much, much cheaper costs. Okay, so this is also something interesting. We actually at the Paris Auto Show announced those partnerships that I mentioned with Vallejo and Foresia, but we also released an EVK uh, that's able to do transmission and receiving waves from 77 to 81 gigahertz. So that's the regulatory bands uh, for automotive and it's something that's commercially available now. Uh, we're going to start selling those EVKs shortly, but the idea is for an automotive company or a university research group that wants to do research in the field of automotive, you now have not just applications that are on the market, but you have an open API so you can build your own applications. Uh, and then one other idea that's becoming commercially available, uh, as you guys can see on the right, we're working with a major beverage manufacturer. I'll give you one guess who it is. I'm trying to spice it up with some humor, not working. <laughs> At least I'm trying. Um, so what we do is we put a very small radar inside of the coolers. And then from that standpoint, we're able to track how many people pass by the cooler. We're able to create basically a funnel that enables the beverage manufacturer or the retailer to understand exactly how many people pass by the cooler and then create a sales funnel around how many people stop, how many people shop, and how many people ultimately purchase. We can also do inventory tracking on the inside of the cooler again because the reflections that we're looking at are soda bottles. So it's a very strong reflector and very easy for us to track. Okay, so those are three fields, three entire industries where we're not just talking about one application but where we're using radar to totally flip the way the industry operates. Elderly care, uh, automotive and as well retail. So now what I want to talk to you guys about for a few minutes is the ability to take this from a company like Viar, that's a commercial company, to putting it into the hands of researchers both on the corporate side and on the university side through evaluation kits. And I think this is an area that's very interesting uh, and it's actually the main cause for me being here at ED Icon is a project that we've started to work on with uh, very close collaborators of ours, mini circuits, and that's a do-it-yourself VNA kit. The idea here is that when a university student begins his university career, he or she'll have a chance to utilize a commercially viable VNA kit, whether it's uh, you know any of the big big brands like Keysight. Uh, you'll be able to use the PNAX for X amount of time, but you won't actually have a chance to understand how the math, how what are the equations that determine 
basic rules of testing, of measurement, to be able to find S parameters, to be able to do error analysis, uh, to have a calibration kit that's your own. The student here is given the component parts. It's basically a VIR system on chip that's an open evaluation board with eight ports, and as well, all of the component parts from our good friends at Mini Circuits. So what the student gets is a packet, essentially a kit, whereby he or she is able to build their own VNA. Now we do this at a really, really low price to make it commercially viable for a university to put this in the hands of the student. Now what we believe is this is something that's going to flip the idea of teaching measurement principles on its head. Because up until now a student has a chance, has had a chance to experience, but they haven't had a chance to actually do. Right? You've had a chance to put your devices into a PNAX and to do the measurement and to get the 50 amp, but you haven't actually had a chance to develop your own algorithms, to be able to build your own software and to make it work. And because we've made the system so open and because we've given you also a very simple GUI to be able to run with it, it becomes a situation whereby the student can start to build their own testing kits. The next version that we'll come out with will be a, a, a VSA VSG so that you can also have the receive side. Um, but the concept here is that a student will be able to build his or her own VNA kit as a first step and be able to take that to the next level in terms of research and development as a student. And then our hope is that they'll be able to take those principles, apply them, and then go, able be, go get a job at Keysight or go start their own company around testing and measuring. Uh, we've done quite a bit of work on the testing side commercially as well. I don't want to belabor that point, but it's something that uh, I think also companies like Copper Mountain have done a great job of really pushing the price down to make, uh, let's say, commercially viable and uh, statistically relevant testing kits really available to the market for the first time. So this is, this is an industry uh, and also a concept that, as a company, we're really excited about because we think that it's ripe for change and we think the way to do that is to bring the price all the way down and give researchers and students the ability to build their own, to build their own kits. Okay, here's another example. Uh, this is what we call Wallabot Developers Kit. And here you have a really simple EVK uh, that is on a board that has, again, one of our low frequency chips. Uh, because of regulatory in the US, it's basically 3.3 to 10.3 gigahertz. And we give you a pseudo open API. It's got profiles, so it's not totally open, but we give you an API upon which you can develop your own applications. So we made 25 or we, we made 100 of these boards two years ago for the first time, and we said we hope we'll sell 25 of them in a year. Uh, we have sold actually thousands of them, and we have both hobbyists, it's in over 300 universities, have active projects working with Wallabot, and the idea basically is to give you an Arduino, an Arduino for RF. Okay, you've got to connect it to a processor, but other than that, we give you everything you need from pre-developed functions, from an open API, from lots and lots of support from our technical team and from myself even, uh, to be able to create your own applications. We've got students, we've had I think six or seven published papers uh, that have been written on the Wallabot itself. And here's an example of a contest that we ran called Power to the Makers. We had one guy, if you look at the best of Europe, this is a kind of cool one, we had a guy do guitar effects through RF, right? So basically anyone here, does anyone here ever play air guitar? Liars, every one of you. Does anyone here ever play air guitar? Okay, thank you, somebody. So now, imagine you're playing your air guitar, okay? But instead of just playing your air guitar, you're, able, you're actually able to have what you're doing with your hands and with your fingers be affected through, uh, uh, through some type of music machine on your computer, okay? We had another guy with a tracking TV stand. Now, obviously, these aren't applications that are gonna change the world. Um, but a lot of the applications that change the world start off with hobbyists. When a hobbyist gets a chance to play with the cheap um, and with an easy to use eval kit, then he or she ultimately goes and starts to build things that are really meaningful, okay? Vehicle rear vision's another one. We've done lots and lots and lots of cool things with this. We've done a couple of contests. We have now uh, free and available both on our site and uh, we actually have, uh, have a couple of branches out there, free code that are available, um, a few, uh, 50, somewhere between 50 and 100 free applications that you can build without even having to develop your own. So this has been uh, unexpected, really big success for us, and the success hasn't been on our side commercially because we sell it for almost no margin. The, the success has been that we've put an RF system into the hands of hobbyists for the first time and said, go have fun. And they can build all types of cool things that have really excited us. Um, here's another one that we're actually just launching in the next couple of weeks, which is a high frequency eval kit. So I mentioned our, our first generation chip. We recently uh, developed the second chip and that chip actually has three frequency bands. The low, 
the low frequency, the 3 to 10, uh, 24 gigahertz band for also anybody here who's a drone enthusiast, and then as well 57 to 71 gigahertz. And what we've done is we've taken the high frequency bands and we've turned it also into a super, uh, super available, super accessible eval kit. Um, and here's an example of it right here that anybody who wants to see afterward can take a look at it. Okay, I have it here. So the kit actually has uh, again, same concept, open API where you have quite a bit more control over the signals. Um, you can measure the signals and in, indeed what's really cool is you have 40 antenna here and you have a single chip, okay? So you have a chance to do really high accuracy imaging. You have a chance to do lots and lots of cool uh, application development on uh, evaluation board that the idea for evaluation kit, that the idea for us is to sell it at a small fraction of whatever else is available on the market so that hobbyists and researchers can start to really develop their own applications using radar. Um, those are three different eval kits that are commercially available from our company. There are others from TI, there are others to be seen. I know Panasonic has a really nifty one at high frequencies coming out. I mentioned also the one that we have on the automotive side with 77 to 81 gigahertz. Uh, the concept is really to put the power to develop these applications into the hands of the people who are doing it both professionally and as well people who are doing it on the university side and on the research and development side. So I hope that this talk was informative. I know it was quite a bit on the application side over the last 25 minutes or so, uh, but the goal is to put the power of RF into the hands of the people who are using it on a day-to-day -day basis, make it affordable, make it accessible, and most importantly, make it fun. So thank you very much. Thank you.